So today I want to talk about arpeggios. And usually what happens when you first start learning arpeggios is you start learning the, these big massive six string arpeggios. Which sounds great on their own um, and is very classical sounding but isn't very useful to use um, in, in a song or a riff or when you're improvising, how would you use that? Um, you can use it across uh, a full A major chord, I guess, but it doesn't sound very unique. So the best way to, to use arpeggios is to uh, create a riff out of them. Most of these riffs actually have notes that are outside of the arpeggio, but the riff is a, you know 85 to 90% of the arpeggio. Here's a few quick examples. Uh, the riff from Jessica. From the Allman Brothers, that is an A major riff. Okay, it does have some notes from uh, outside of the um, uh, A major arpeggio that, uh, that are taken from the A major scale, but it's still a heavily based uh, A major arpeggio. Another very famous one would be uh, Dire Straits Salt of the Swing. So that first initial rake is a D minor arpeggio. The C note is not part of a D minor chord, but it is part of a D minor 7. So we won't call it D minor 7 arpeggio, even though that's what it is. We'll call it a D minor uh, arpeggio with a note from the D minor scale because there are a few more. So the best way to memorize these shapes uh, is uh, is bottoms of chords. Okay, so what do I mean? Well, if we take a look at uh, a D minor arpeggio, let's find the uh, the lowest one we can find. Of course, it's going to be a D minor chord that you already know. Now, normally this D minor chord will have the the strings D, uh, G, B, and E in it. We're going to take out the, the D string only because we're only um, we're only using three strings for each uh, each arpeggio. Okay. So that's going to leave us with the G string, the B string, and the high E string. And then we still have all three notes that are required for uh, a D minor arpeggio. So whenever you're playing arpeggios, um, it's better to isolate the notes. We could let it ring and arpeggiate it. But arpeggiating something actually really means to break it up. Uh, and if you want to break it up, well, isolate each note. So there's our first shape. Our second shape is based off of this chord here, this D minor chord. Now, for that D minor chord, we're just playing the bottom three notes. And this is a barred D minor chord, barring from the A string on the fifth fret down. We're not using the low E string, okay? So if you don't know how to play this bar chord, well, then this, this technique is not going to be any use to you. Uh, because this is really helping you to memorize where these shapes are. So if we were just to play the last three notes of this, or last three strings, um, we would have our, uh, our shape that we're looking for. So what we would do is we would only fret those three. And this is what we get. So another bottom of a chord we can do, another D minor chord shape is here. And it is uh, a full bar chord from the, uh, the low E string down on 10. And we can play just the bottom three notes of that. There's our D minor shape. And let's just cover only those bottom three and we end up with this. So there's our three shapes. Now your next step will be to understand where the, the notes in the D minor scale are. Okay, so now that you know where this chord is, in comparison to the arpeggio, well, where are the D minor notes in this part of the neck? Okay, so for this one, it's going to be the easiest one. It's going to be your shape one of D minor. For these other ones, if you know all your shapes, then you'll be okay.
So let's convert those to major. Um, so we go back to the, uh, the the open D minor chord. Let's convert to major. What we need to do is we need to find where the minor third is. Well, it's right here. We move that over, but this is terrible fingering, so we just do this. And of course, we end up with a very familiar shape, a D minor chord. Let's do the same thing with this one. We're going to convert it to uh, a D major. Well, again, we have to find where the minor third is. This is a, the minor third of the chord. We have to raise that. We end up with this. Now, what bottom of a chord is that? Well, you might not recognize it, but it's this major bar chord. Which is actually a slang shape. The real shape is, is meant to be played like this. And that's where you get those bottom three strings that look like that. Let's convert this shape to major. Well, the minor third in this case is actually right here. And that is the bottom of uh, a D major chord, okay? Same thing as a minor one, but adding the middle finger. I hope this has helped you guys in some way to memorizing um, some arpeggios that are actually, actually useful. Combine them with notes from uh, from the key you're playing, um, and and try different things. I mean, there there are uh, there are a lot of ways to to make an arpeggio sound uh, very catchy um, and very and make them useful.